my last video, I called the full roller release a curse that coaches scramble to try and fix for their bowlers. And this is where I explain why and whether or not this is actually possible. The first reason I actually spoke about in my last video, which is that full rollers have less shot variety. What I said in my last video is that there's no switching grips willy-nilly because we are restricted by the nature of the sport and its equipment, that finger grip layouts need to be drilled into the ball we are using so the ball will not behave properly if not thrown how they are drilled. Another reason relating to the bowling ball is that full rollers are limited in terms of drilling layout because of their ball roll. Conventional bowlers have lots of choice in terms of how to drill their bowling balls, while full rollers can at the very most play with the distance between the pin and the thumb hole. Which leads me to Tom Smallwood. A smalls a full roller? The best way to find out for sure is to aim a bunch of high-speed cameras at Smalls as he makes his shots, both the hook and spare shots, and also his balls and the layouts on them. Which, for the time being, cannot be done, at least not by me, living on the other side of the world. So all I can rely on for now is the footage currently available and tell you what I can find out from them, and the similarities and differences between how we throw our bowling balls. Apart from him being a pro and me being a faceless amateur bowler making videos on YouTube, obviously. One thing I did manage to find out is that Smalls uses different grips for his hook and spare balls. I cannot tell if the layouts themselves are different, so I shall not comment on that. Anyway, his regular ball uses a Detroit half thumb, offset to the outside of the ball. His spare balls seem to be drilled with a regular full depth thumb though. And since we're normally not doing any tricks with the arm and wrist when trying to throw a ball straight, and therefore can be considered the most natural way to throw a bowling ball, let's look at how Smalls naturally throws his bowling ball. Honestly, it took a fair bit of searching to find a clip of him throwing a solid coloured spare ball with grips in a contrasting colour. So have a look at how the ball is rolling down the lane, and where the grip holes are as the ball is rolling. Yep. The ball is rolling in between the thumb and finger holes. And by that definition, yes, Tom Smallwood is a full roller. Then why the hell are people, including the late Mo Pinnell, rest in peace, saying he isn't a full roller? The answer is the other conventional definition of the full roller, that we have zero axis tilt. And that if he somehow generates some axis tilt, we're not full rollers anymore. So let's talk about axis tilt then. Axis tilt is, as the term suggests, how far you tilt the equator of the ball away from vertical. This is what pure axis tilt looks like. For an example of axis tilt, have a look at Ryan Schaefer. And for a more recent example, Zach Whiteman. Can a full roller make use of axis tilt? Technically, no. The answer is actually not so simple, which I shall explain later, but by conventional definitions, a full roller throws without axis tilt. Or more accurately, a full roller is throwing at infinite axis tilt, because the vertical axis the tilt is measured against is itself rotating. Now, axis rotation. If axis tilt is shifting the axis left or right, axis rotation is shifting the axis front or back. This is basically what axis rotation looks like. What happens when you apply conventional axis rotation to the ball while throwing full roller? What usually happens is backspin, which by most sensors in bowling is suboptimal. The slight problem with these definitions is that conventionally axis tilt is measured relative to the vertical axis, because this applies only to conventional releases where the equator between the thumb and fingers is at an angle relative to the vertical at the point of release. At the point of the full roller release, the equator between the thumb and finger holes is actually usually horizontal. So the axis tilt and rotation full rollers like Smalls generate is on the horizontal axis, not the vertical axis we use to look at ball roll with. Have a look at how my ball rolls for my spare and hook shots. Now have a look at Tom Smallwood's hook and spare shots. It's difficult to see from the available footage, but there are slight differences in how the hook and spare shots roll down the lane, 
which I'm going to attribute to the axis tilt and rotation you need to full rollers. Though to be sure, I need to at least stick a high speed camera on the other side of the lane to see more clearly the positions of my grip holes as the ball is rolling down the lane, and using a contrasting set of colours for my balls and grip holes. Having talked about all this, is Tom Small a full roller or not a full roller? The answer is yes, he is a full roller, and it's a definition of what a full roller is that is really the problem. Now let's move on to whether the full roller can be fixed. Mo mentions in his Radical Monday video a few things that are true about full rollers. First is that the full roller release is indeed ring finger dominant. What does it mean to be ring finger dominant? In a nutshell, it means the ring finger accounts for the majority of the grip pressure on the ball at the point of release. Basically, a full roller rips through the ball when releasing it using almost entirely the ring finger. Is it possible to fix a full roller by forcing the use of the middle finger? Theoretically, yes. But how about practically? Well, let's find out. To minimize the variables which may affect how the ball travels down the lane, I used only one lane for this experiment. I also only used only one ball. Have I gone far enough? How about the variables inherent to the ball itself? What about the core and cover stock? Well, simple. Just use a ball that has no core and the planeless cover stock possible, and one that's been drilled to be as neutral as possible. And conventionally. So whichever way the ball rolls is entirely down to how I throw it. And to go even further in minimizing variables, I started this experiment by throwing the ball straight at the corner pins, so I can take wrist position and action out of the equation. Now have a look at the oil tracks, and how they cut diagonally across my thumb and finger holes. And now have a look at what happens when I do the same using my left hand, which throws conventionally. Look at the oil tracks that resulted, closer to what most are more used to seeing in it. Now let's try to get more oil tracks onto my ball so we have a better view, shall we? So is it possible to get something like a conventional oil track using my right hand simply by reducing the dominance of my ring finger? Well, let's find out by taking my ring finger out of the equation entirely. And let's have a look at what happens. Yep, no real difference. The second way to fix the full roller mode mentioned was by cocking the wrist and going 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Now, based on my own experiments using a baseball, this is correct. I can throw conventionally doing this using a baseball. What about doing this with a 15 pound bowling ball? Well, I can probably do that for one game. Then I need to see a physiotherapist or surgeon. Just look at how awkward and strained my forearm is when I do this. Using a 14 pound ball, sitting still, at home, because at least for me, my right arm isn't wired up to be able to do this naturally. If I could, I wouldn't be a full roller anyway. Which brings us back to the headline of this video. Is the full roller a curse? For someone like me, yes. And personally, an unbreakable one too. Does this dampen my enjoyment of the sport? Well, as you've been seeing, not enough of me to quit playing and making stuff about it. So if you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe to my channel and share it with your people. This is the Fokker from Fokker Bowls, striking out.